Hello everybody, I'm Scott Summers for XCore TV and today is a special day. We're in our backyard down in Del Mar at an antique show. Now we're in a special booth right now with a gentleman that you might recognize from Pawn Stars and Lords of War, Sean Rich. Now, Sean is an expert in antique arms and armor, and he's got a lot of cool stuff around here. We're going to take a look at some of it, so stay tuned. Now, when you're dealing with antiques such as arms and armor, it kind of just boggles the mind of, of wondering who held it, you know, who was, oh, did it see battle? You know, what kind of action did it see at the time? Was it on a ship? Was it, uh, you know, the Civil War? Was it in the, in, in any kind of war, actually, you know? Did, were, did it something that scared the Indians when Columbus stepped off? Columbus stepped off. The, the stories behind the firearms or the armor, uh, any of this stuff, it just boggles the mind. It's incredible. So there's a wide variety of not just firearms and armory here, but I mean, he's also got treasure from actual sunken ships from the Caribbean. A lot of cool stuff here. And what you see, there's there's match locks, there's flint locks, there's cap and ball, there's cartridge style firearms, and black powder. A lot of this stuff is all black powder. Um, you've got knives that are guns, guns that are knives, old old rifles, old pistols, you know, pocket pistols, pepper boxes, everything you could imagine in the firearms for the early 1700s, 1800s. It's it's kind of incredible. It's overwhelming. 
Sean Rich is a guy for the expert in all this stuff. And we're going to talk to him here in a moment. So stay tuned. we got more X-Core on the way. So we're down here at Del Mar at the Antique Show, and we're at Sean Rich's booth. Now, Sean, you've got uh, quite a variety of stuff going on here. Tell us a bit about it. Well, first and foremost, everything you see here is genuine antique. There's no reproductions. There's nothing like that. So what you're seeing has either already been in a museum or will be in the near future or maybe even in a motion picture. You never know. Now, out of all your collection here today, is there anything that really stands out as one of your favorites? Uh, okay, first and foremost, <laughs> I'm a collector. <laughs> so I love all of it. And that is a problem when you're also a dealer, when you're trying to sell this stuff. Because every time I sell one of these things that I love so much, and there's a story behind each one of them on how I obtained it, it's like selling a kid. <laughs> it's, it's very tough. I mean, I love all this stuff. I mean, especially this breastplate. This is German Royal Palace Guard, and that would have been 1580s. Wow. And here it is, and it's still in really great condition. So, Sean, you don't only just do firearms and armor. You also do hidden treasure, or sunken treasure, and stuff like that? Absolutely. Ever since I was a kid, I was fascinated by Spanish shipwrecks, pirates, that whole thing. And I, I was born in Florida, looking out over the Gulf of Mexico and thinking, oh, what is still out there? So, Sean, what are, what are we looking at here? What makes this so special? This is actually the way it, this was found on the shipwreck site. This is what they call a clump of eight real and four real Spanish silver coins. The typical Spanish pieces of eight that you read about in the history books. What makes this so special is that it's in situ, in other words, as found. Most of the salvage companies, when they find an artifact like this, they put it in a chemical bath to reduce all the, the silver oxides to free up the coins. Well, that's great. But if you don't save a specimen like this, no one knows how it was really found. Most of the investors, when these things are found, the coins are individually cleaned and then sold off. What makes this so special also is that it has some visible dates of 1714, so there's no question as to where this came from. This is just an unbelievable artifact. And it wasn't until a guy named Kip Wagner in the early 60s, after a good storm, realized that there were these blackened chunks of metal washing up on the beach. And he said, oh, these are kind of cool. These are going to skip great. And he would throw them back out in the water and skip them until he found a gold one. And then the light bulb went on and went, oh, crap. I just threw a couple hundred pieces of eight back in the water because they were encrusted. You couldn't tell what they were. Wow. So Sean, you've also worked in the movie industry. Tell us a little bit about that. The first movie that I had access to was Last of the Mohicans with Daniel Day-Lewis. I was just captivated. You know, it was French and Indian War, the famous book. Oh my God. And then I got a call from Disney. So then I was called in to not only supply the real authentic weapons that would be of the period for the early 18th century, but they also hired me as an armorer to not only service the weapons, but as a, you know, a historical consultant wow. to make sure that the weapons were being applied correctly. I was contacted by History Channel to work on a show, a little show, called Pawn Stars. 
who knew that it would be what it is today. So five seasons of being on Pawn Stars and then I transitioned and had my own show with National Ge Geographic called Lords of War. That has now taken its course. I'm moving on to another project. So stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> so when you were working on the movies, did any of the uh, actors or actresses actually express interest in the, the arms and stuff like that? Ironically, one of the guys that I was kind of shocked that showed real interest was uh, Keith Richards oh, from the Rolling Stones. Yeah. He played Johnny Depp's you know, father. Now, is there one, any, is there any particular items that you've really searched and searched for and can't really find? It's like your holy grail? Ooh, yeah, there's a long list of those. <laughs> uh, what's, what's the one that's on the top? Oh boy, um, I'd love to have a Maximilian suit of armor. You know, that's 1500s, but chances of finding that is <laughs> slim to none. Um, they're only in museums now. Uh, there's lots of coins, there's lots of other artifacts. That's why I love what I do, because it's just not one genre. It's a lot of stuff. Well, thanks for your time, Sean. And uh, like I said, you got a lot of great stuff here, and thanks for sharing it with us. I'm Scott Summers with Sean Rich. We're at the Del Mar Antique Show. Stay tuned, we got more X-Core on the way.